Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you 20 amazing fragrances. Uh, but before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to hit that button, join the Weird and Wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. Lately, I've been sampling a ton of niche fragrances and I have, inf I have fallen in love with many of them. If I had $5,000 to spend tomorrow on fragrances, these would be the fragrances that I would buy. Hands down, I would just make a huge shopping cart and I would buy them. Now I'm actually really excited about this because I can just imagine it happening. Who knows, maybe it will. So these are the fragrances that I would be getting immediately uh, if the opportunity rose. So first one, first one is Absolutio by Navitas Parfums. This is a delectable spicy fragrance that I am absolutely in love with. To me, it's just so, so delicious. Um, I found that I really, really, really enjoy cinnamon in a fragrance. This one has some cinnamon and saffron in, which gives it, you know, a little bit of a kick. There's almond in here, apple, toffee, woody notes, some dark chocolate and caramel. So you're getting this delicious kind of uh, woody, spicy fragrance that I just think is is divine. So the, the, the longevity on it was fantastic and I just, I fell in love. So it would be definitely coming home with me. <laughs> now, next fragrance that I would definitely be purchasing is Dolce Amalfi by Zerzhov. So this is part of the Casmarati line and this is a loner from, uh, from Hesse. She lent me quite a few over the past little while, which I so appreciate. And honestly, I just wanna thank Hesse uh, publicly. She has such an amazing collection. And so she's given me a lot of samples, which has helped me to kind of delve into the niche world. So really, really, really appreciate her. She's just an awesome human being. But anyway, uh, Dolce Amalfi, so delicious. It smells to me like a, an orange caramel. Definitely more gourmand leaning. Uh, although it's gourmand, it's definitely a summer gourmand. So you could wear this one. Uh, I think you could wear it all year round. I mentioned that not too long ago, but this is beautiful in the summer heat and it smells just juicy. I think some people uh, kind of compare it to like a juicy fruit gum. I can kind of see that, but this one has so much more depth to it. There's some uh, kind of, I think there's some cardamom in it or something of that nature, which kind of gives it a little bit of spiciness. So although it's sweet and orangey and caramely, even though it doesn't have orange in it, uh, even though it's kind of got that sweet fruity component, there's depth to this as well. So I just think that this is such a beautiful fragrance and I would definitely be getting it. The next fragrance in my dream haul would be Lancome's Oud Bouquet. Now I have Shakehoff Oud, love Shakehoff Oud, uh, and that's the more affordable, like Swiss Arabian version, very similar, but I've smelt Oud Bouquet and it's just a lot smoother. So sometimes I find, um, uh, I find Shakehoff Oud by Swiss Arabian a little bit screechy, it's a little bit loud, a little bit sharp, uh, whereas Lancome's Oud Bouquet, same components, same scent profile. So you're getting the same thing, but a little bit more of that praline coming through and it just smells velvety to me. So I imagine wearing a beautiful kind of deep, like ox blood or cherry, like dark cherry velvet dress when I wear that fragrance. Like it's so beautiful. It would be beautiful for like a formal evening occasion, especially like I think of Christmas time. Uh, but it's just a stunning, stunning fragrance. I hear that it's discontinued, which I think is horrific because it really is so beautiful, but I absolutely love it. Next on my $5,000 dream haul would be Still Life in Rio by Olfactive Studio. Again, I've talked about that one recently. It's kind of like, you know, I think of like a mojito, but a mojito with some spice. So it's got, I think, cardamom and clove in it. I think I don't really get the alcohol in it. So some people notice the rum. I don't really. 
uh, and it, it's got a limey feel to it. There's a little bit of mint. I don't really notice the mint, but it just smells refreshing and yet there's a depth to it, which I think is so beautiful. It's definitely out of the ordinary and sometimes I find citrus to be too sharp, too clear, too uh, almost like a, a household cleaner. Uh, it can go in that, vi that direction and also really short-lived. Still Life in Rio, it's still not super duper long lasting, but I get four or five hours at least out of it. Uh, and it's got some depth and warmth to it, which just makes it really, just really cool. The next fragrance is another Zerja fragrance. Eee! I just love it. I, and it's so funny because I talked about it once uh, in sampling and I'm like, well, it's nice, but I don't know if I'd wear it. I can't stop thinking about it. And it is Lyra by Zerjoff. I absolutely love it. To me, it smells like a slightly smoky lemon pound cake. It's delicious. Like I, I want to eat it when I smell it. Like it's so, so good. So definitely would be getting that one along with Dolce & Balfi. The next one on my dream haul would be Delina Exclusive. Now I know that seems like a shock. I'm just assuming I'd already have Delita because I've talked about it so much. Uh, but I really want Delina Exclusive too. I like that powdery quality, a little bit deeper, a little more mysterious, uh, a little bit sweeter as well. And you're losing the tart aspect from that rhubarb. Uh, so really love Delina Exclusive exclusive and would definitely be getting it. I would also get Cassili from Par Parfums to Marley. Now I had tried that one uh, like quite a long time ago and it was nice but I'm like oh I don't think I would I don't think I would want it you know it's just okay but lately I'm on a major peach kick and it gives me kind of a fluffy peach almost as if it was a peach marshmallow that's what I kind of get from Cassili. So to me, it smells so feminine and just kind of soft, airy, a little bit flirty and just, just beautiful. Beautiful and somehow relaxing to me. Maybe peach is really relaxing to me these days. I don't know, but definitely would be getting Cassili. Next fragrance is Shirgi. I love this. Now this is by Serge Luton. Uh, I have a really nice size sample and then my friend Lori gave me a couple more samples. This is from Deep Green Beauty. Uh, love Shirgi. So it's kind of got like a, it smells like there's some cherry in there, a little bit of leather, a little bit of uh, grassiness somehow like hay. I think hay is in this one. It smells deep. It smells smoky. Uh, it smells sexy but it's not so sexy that I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing this one during the day. It's long lasting and I just love it. Like I absolutely love it. I, f I find that this one, sometimes sexy fragrances, I don't feel like I, I, I don't consider myself, you know, you know, we're all different. So me, I'm quirky. I don't consider myself sexy. So sometimes evening fragrances, <laughs> Like I feel like I feel like a little girl put putting on like big huge high heels and some sort of weird set of pearls uh, when I wear a sexy fragrance. I still love them, and every once in a while I kind of get into that you know kind of like uh, you know I'm I'm a temptress type mood. Uh, but overall, that's not really my personality. So this is a, a gorgeous uh, evening fragrance. Like you could wear it in the evening. You could wear it during the day. Uh, it's, it's sexy, uh, but it, it's, uh, smells like kind of a not trying to be sexy. It just is. Uh, that's what I get out of this one. And it, it feels a little more me. <laughs> the next fragrance would be Honey Oud by Montel. I am in love, in love with this fragrance. Again, it's, it's sexy. It's it's just delicious. What I get is that oud, smells a little leathery, but with that honey sweetness, this one is so good. It's smooth. I don't find it smells synthetic. So sometimes I find Montel's, uh, Montel's and Mancera's can be a little bit just different. I don't feel that off of this one. This one smells deep. It smells sensual. Love the honey in it. The honey isn't cloying and paired with that oud, it is spectacular. Yeah, gotta have it. The next fragrance I'd be getting, it's a little bit of a shock to me actually, but it is Gris Charnel by BDK. Now, 
Uh, in the past, I've tried it and I'm like, well, it's nice, but it's not very long lasting. I tried it again. And part of it is, is when you have a sample, it's hard to get the full experience of a spray. So I tried it again and it actually lasted about five hours on my skin. I didn't smell it a whole lot. Like it seemed to be a little bit more of a skin scent. The image that I get when I smell Gris Charnel and I've just fallen in love with, with the smell of it is if you imagine like a cloche, you know, those, those kind of narrow uh, glass kind of domes with a little handle on top. Imagine that sitting on a cake stand and someone has kind of inserted a tube and filled the cloche up with smoke. So you see the smoke swirling and you see that gray color and it's just kind of misty and swirling in that cloche so that it's clear but it's gray and it's misty and kind of sterile in a way. That's what I get out of Gris Charnel. It smells uh, a, a hint of smoke, a little bit of clean, uh, and just so uh, sophisticated. I think it's a very classy smelling fragrance. I think of a rich woman uh, walking into a hotel and just smelling like Gris Charnel. Uh, and um, she just kind of gets what she wants because she's old money and always has. <laughs> That's what I get out of that fragrance. It's clean, it's sophisticated, uh, it's very um, understated, but very classy. So uh, I think it would make an amazing, uh, little more unusual everyday fragrance. Definitely could be a signature scent and I've somehow fallen in love. While we're on BDK, the other one I would have to get is Rouge Smoking. Rouge Smoking and Shergi, to me, kind of fall in the same category. So with Rouge Smoking, you're getting a little bit of a cherry, to me, a cherry vibe with a little bit of a smoky kind of feel to it. But again, it's just addictive to me. It's a little bit sweeter to me than Shergi. Uh, but I just love both of them and I love that scent profile. I love that it's slightly different. It, it's definitely also a very sophisticated fragrance so I can see putting it on in the evening. And again, it doesn't smell super sexy. It just smells uh, alluring. So I really love that one. I get the cherry, I get a little bit of kind of almost a leathery, smoky uh, type vibe to it and I'm in love. Next fragrance is New York Intense by Fragrance Dubois. I love this fragrance. To me, this smells like New York at Christmas time. There's this uh, spicy quality to it that's just so gorgeous. I imagine wearing a black velvet long dress. Uh, I arrive in a limousine and I'm wearing kind of a stole. I go up the steps, there's a bit of snow, like just a skiff of snow on the ground, so it's kind of cool. Uh, very festive. You can see Christmas tree uh, standing in the window of this ginormous brownstone. And you go in, there's a little string quartet going on in the background. Everybody's milling about. There's beautiful food. There's garlands up the stairway. It's just an absolute beautiful sight. I would be wearing New York Intense for sure. It just smells deep, spicy, delicious, sophisticated, definitely made for some sort of fancy party, and I need it in my collection. Now the next fragrance actually kind of reminds me of Tobacco Vanille, and it's Golden Guy by Melic Perfumes. Now that fragrance to me has kind of a tobacco-y vibe, but with a little bit of apricot uh, thrown in there. And it's like a really overripe apricot that gives it a slight booziness. I don't know what it, uh, I don't know what it was about that one, but I absolutely fell in love with it. It gave me the same vibe as Tobacco Vanille, but with that added apricot, I actually think I liked it better. Uh, but there's place uh, there's place enough. Like I've got five thousand dollars to spend. There's place enough for Golden Guy in my collection, and I would definitely be getting it. Now, next fragrance is not a niche fragrance. But I'd have to have it, and that is Coco Noir by Chanel. Again, it's just a classy, sophisticated perfume. I wouldn't consider it sexy, but it's definitely a formidable fragrance. So I imagine, again, a rich heiress, probably in her 50s, uh, dressed to the hilt, 
at an evening party and she's got Coco Noir on. It smells formidable. It smells classy and sophisticated, but it smells like an evening perfume. There's a little bit of spiciness to it. I prefer it over Coco. Not quite sure why, other than I like that sp spicy component. I like the black bottle and it would match my Coco Mademoiselle. It would fit with my Coco Mademoiselle and that would make me happy. <laughs> Next fragrance I would be getting is Emeraude de Gourmand by Le Fleur du Golf. I'll leave all the links down below for all these fragrances, by the way. Uh, but this is from Parfum Exquise, which is a beautiful perfume, uh, a beautiful perfume shop uh, in Montreal, and they have gorgeous fragrances. I believe they ship all over, so I'll leave the the link to the actual website as well, but they've got this beautiful line of fragrances that are really relatively affordable. So I think uh, a full bottle is 135 Canadian, which to me for a niche fragrance is, is a great price and many of them are beautiful. I'm thinking of doing like a whole entire dedicated review to them because they were there were so many beauties uh, in the bunch. My favorite was the Emerue de Gourmand. I hope I'm saying that right. It was kind of a delicious coconut fragrance that was just kind of refreshing and it, it was just beautiful. So definitely would be getting that one. So the next fragrance that I would be getting is another Parfums to Marley. Sorry if you don't like PDM, but I happen to love them and it would be Meliora. Now I just recently smelt it when I went to Calgary and it's just this beautiful kind of sweet, uh, there's there's a, f a sweet fruity almost tea like fragrance with some green in it The color of the juice is this light kind of pastel minty green uh, Which I absolutely love and the the green bottle next to the pink bottles would be absolutely gorgeous So definitely would want that one. I just really love the fragrance. I found it refreshing uh, I can't see it being super long-lived like it would be maybe five hours max but I just loved how refreshing it was uh, just that hint of sweetness to it. Um, some people have compared it to Lalique's Amethyst, and although I can see where they're going with it, I think it's a lot, I, I think Meliora is a lot sweeter, so it'd be like a sweet fruit tea, if that makes sense, but it's absolutely beautiful, and I want it. Next fragrance is Ylang and Gold by M. Mikalef. Now, I actually haven't smelled Ylang and Gold. I heard that it smelled similar to Hane Mori. Uh, that said, I want it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want a Mika left in my collection. Uh, I also love that kind of, uh, that, that front scent profile, and it is just raved about. So I'm very curious, and I think that the bottles are beautiful. So definitely would be wanting Ylang and Gold. It's just kind of a sweet, kind of delicate fragrance. From what I hear, a little bit kind of uh, just fluttery, sweet, delicate uh, is what I, and very smooth is what I've heard. So it would be a blind buy, but I would definitely be getting it. Next fragrance, I definitely have sampled it and it is Blackbird by Untamed Perfumes. I love this one. Now, if you've smelt Santal Royal by Guerlain, it's very similar, uh, but I actually like Blackbird better. It's got a little bit more spice. It's a little bit smoother, a, a hint sweeter, I think, uh, but it's very, very similar. I just happen to love it and love that scent profile. Like I'm kind of addicted to that scent profile. So definitely would want Blackbird. Okay, next, and this may throw me over my $5,000 budget, uh, but I I want um, a House of Siage cupcake and I'm absolutely enamored with the two cupcakes that have come out recently. One's called Sweet Dreams and I can't remember the name of the other one but it's Lemon. Uh, it's just the most recent one. I don't know why because they're kind of child looking like childlike looking like they've got the the Sweet Dreams one has a big cherry on top and then it's got these gummy bears attached to it and then the lemon one uh, I can't remember what is on it, some sort of lemony type thing, uh, like cake almost looking, but I just, I just think they're so cute and for some reason they speak to the, ch the girl inside of me and I definitely want those cupcakes. So I actually want the two of them. One would fit in my budget, two would put me over, but I kind of want the, the two of them because it'd be almost like having a set. 
So uh, I do know that the Sweet Dreams Cupcake, and I've, I'm showing you all the pictures, the Sweet Dreams Cupcake is uh, kind of like, from what I hear, similar to Tom Ford's Bitter Peach, which I think is really a beautiful fragrance. Um, don't know anything about the longevity. Some people have been di disappointed in the smell, uh, but I just, I, I really want a cupcake. It would be applied by, but I wouldn't be able to help myself. The lemony colored one, the lemon one, uh, it, it uh, is apparently kind of a lemon vanilla, and I think I'd probably like that one better. Uh, but I, yeah, I just kind of want both. The last fragrance I'd be getting would be Dirty Mango by Richard Perfumes or Mango Skin by Wilhelm Perfumery. Uh, now, Dirty Mango I like slightly more because it's a little bit more tart, but they're both gorgeous mango fragrances. So whichever one I could get my hands on, which would likely be the Wilhelm Perfumery one, would be the one I would be getting. So definitely need a mango fragrance and both of those scratch that itch. So I'd be getting them. So those are my fragrances from my magnificent $5,000 dream haul. I hope that you enjoyed this. This is basically my wish list. Uh, but I thought it was kind of a fun way to put it. So I like seriously, I am very excited about all of these fragrances. I can just imagine, like, wouldn't it be like Christmas to have that kind of money to just actually buy whatever your heart's desire in the area of fragrance? Like, it would be just amazing. So I, uh, I really enjoyed doing this video. I hope you enjoyed it too. Have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.